Hey y'all, so it is a little bit chilly here in Oklahoma City, as you can tell from my toboggan. I have a few things to do, um, just some little garden chores that I need to get done, but I was going through the last video and looking and liking the comments and looking and seeing what um, people were asking. And there were a few questions on the list that I wanted to answer in today's video. Um, and then I need to get some weeding done. So I thought, as I said in previous videos, that the weeding and the raised bed stuff would be totally done back behind the garage space. Well, I forgot that it was spring break last week. And so uh, when I contacted Alex, he was like, hey, I'm on spring break with my kids. And I just totally forgot. So um, I was going to have them weed that back there, but it is driving me absolutely crazy. So I'm going to take after that today. Uh, I'll also share with you some other things that uh, we may be planning on doing back there. If you've uh, paid attention to the community tab, which is where I've said multiple times that I post some thoughts and ideas and uh, just general updates. Um, you might see on that community post what I am talking about. So I'll share that with you when I go back behind the garage. Uh, and then the last thing is I need to get an Olympian fig planted. I'm going to be planting it in, in a pot. I will share with you all of the stats on that fig. But for now, let's just turn around and I'll answer question number one on the comments list. So I did say questions. Really, there were just multiple, multiple questions, the exact same question. And I thought I had answered this in previous videos, but I guess I haven't, or if it's just been a while. So everybody asked, why do we have our sectional turned around this direction? And I think it's probably from the perspective of videos, it's probably difficult to kind of understand how this is set up a little bit, but we have um, this space right here below this window box, uh, which you can see I still have not gotten those boxwoods planted. It's going to be around 32 degrees tonight, so we're going to be flirting with freezing. And so all of those boxwoods and all of the plants over here on that rack are going to be put up in the garage. But back to what I was saying is the sectional, so Tommy always sits right here or right here, and I always sit right there in the corner. So having the sectional this way allows this section over here underneath the window box not to be completely blocked off. Again, there's a hose there. Hopefully in the near future, I will be getting another hose link and that will not be right there on the house. Uh, ideally, it'll be probably over here in this corner attached to a post like we did in the front yard. But I didn't want to cut this off. So I do enjoy this view as well. And then if Tommy's sitting right there or right there, or if I'm right here, I usually have my feet kicked up and I can see both this direction and out to the yard. So it kind of gives us the best of both worlds without turning the sectional with the long back here and then the short side here, kind of cutting off this walkway and kind of separating that space. I think if we turned it around the other way, it would be less inviting when you walk into the backyard from this perspective over here from the driveway. So I think it would really close it off. And this is the main route that we use to go into our house every single day. We always park in the driveway uh, behind the gate and come in this direction. Um, so for us, this just works best. It's the most functional for how we use this space back here. So I thought that I would comment on that because there's just so many questions. And then the next thing is this over here, if I can ever find it, and if there are any subscribers out there that know where I can get a fairly decent size uh, limestone rectangle fountain, so it doesn't have to be a fountain, but like a limestone rectangle vessel that I can make into a fountain, that is going to go right there. So I've always had plans for a water feature here. We had a water feature at our other house and I really, really miss having that water feature. We sit here a lot on the inside of those two French doors and I want to see a water feature when I look out of those doors. So if you know of anywhere I can get one of those that doesn't cost an absolute fortune or that I don't have to pay a fortune for in shipping, please 
uh, either reach out to me on the comments or take a look at the information on my YouTube page and email me directly. Um, let's go back here. So the grass is really filling in nicely. Tommy has been able to mow for the last um, three weekends in a row. So he's really excited about that. This is the mess back here that I will be cleaning up here shortly. I really need to get this fuzzy wuzzy in the ground and then I'm going to wait until, so our average last frost date is typically April 10th ish. So I want to wait, these are Veronica and some Feverfew right there. Those two are Feverfews. This row is Veronica. Uh, I, I want to wait until we're past that freezing point to transplant those over here in this area, probably somewhere. But I transplanted those at the end of last summer when we were starting to take everything out of the backyard over here to kind of create that blank landscape to get started here before too long. Something else is this peony right here. I think it's a Hawaiian coral. I planted two back here and I'll, I cannot remember exactly what varieties they were. I know one of them was a Hawaiian coral and I think that this one is it. I'm trying to wait until the last minute possible to transplant this guy. See, you can see it has some major buds on it. I'm going to try to just dig around a very wide section right here and put it in a pot so that it doesn't even know that it got transplanted. Uh, these are some, let me see if I can get to them. These are Lavender Park Iris, which when we put this raised bed back here, those hadn't come up. So I will be digging up those as well and saving those. Looks like there's some sedum there also, if I can get my camera to cooperate. Some sedum, not sure what variety that is, but um, all this larkspur is going to get removed as much as I would love to keep it and let it bloom. It's just a little bit out of control back here. And all of this right here is getting ready to get ripped up and relayed so that it's even and just looks a little bit cleaner. So with that being said, I am just going to set my camera up and get to weeding. I'm not sure about you guys, but um, weeding in high speed is so satisfying to me. Those, one of those things like people like to watch certain stuff. I like to watch people weed in um, basically fast forward. So let me just set my camera up and we'll get started. And then at the end of this video, I'll probably go ahead and plant the Olympian fig and then share with you our final thoughts on the garage apartment once I get all of that weeded and the fig planted. All right, so I am going to grab all of my weeding gear and we'll get started. knee pad, my weeding tool. I've had this forever. I don't know what brand it is, but this is my favorite weeding tool. My mechanics wear gloves. And of course, my Fiskars hard bottom kangaroo bag. Okay, had to pause this video really quick through the time lapse. Um, 
Most of you know that I'm not really a glove wearer when I garden, uh, except for when I have my nails done. However, I was just weeding that poana that was right there and I pulled back some of that taller poana that was closer to the raised bed and there was a very small black widow and its web right there behind the poana. I am so glad that I had gloves on and you'll probably never catch me not wearing gloves again. So uh, that's never happened to me before. I'm sure probably I've been close but I have never known that I was close and I literally put my hand on that Black Widow. So I am a glove wearer all the time now. Okay, so got that all weeded. That is super satisfying. I am going to pot up the fig really quick and then I will share with you the information that I'm excited to share with you on some possible things for back here in the raised bed area. So it's just a possibility um, when I mention it. Just remember that I still have a lot of research to do, but let's pot up the fig really quick and then we'll jump to that. So this is the Olympian fig, and I will say that this information on the back says four to eight high and four to eight wide. It is um, hardy to zone six, and it is a very cold uh, hardy fig. So that is the reason why I chose this. Um, after getting this and looking up all the information online, everything I can find says eight to 12-ish feet high and eight to 10, feet wide. So these, this sizing information is a lot different than what I can find online. But regardless, what I'm going to do is first, I'm going to clean off this pot. And then um, what I'm going to do though, is I'm going to keep this planted in a pot. So I will upsize it as needed, but I want it back in the raised bed area. Uh, because it goes with the vegetables and some of the other things that will be growing back there this year. I should also mention that it is a self-pollinating fig. Uh, you might want to know that information. Um, but yeah, basically, I just really like figs, and so I decided to get a fig tree this year, and I know that there's a lot of fig trees that are a lot more popular than Olympian, like Little Miss Figgy and some other uh, fig trees. I would love to know if you guys are in or around zone seven, what your favorite fig tree is and what fig tree produces most for you. Uh, I did cut off some shoots about a week ago when I got this and I stuck them in the soil because I want this to be tree shaped and it was starting to branch out. So I stuck them in the soil and uh, I think they might actually root. I've never uh, rooted fig cuttings before so we'll give that a shot and I'll keep you guys posted on how that goes but let's just get this potted up. trying to get this out of here without disturbing these cuttings. They don't look like they have any roots on them yet, but the leaves certainly haven't wilted.
Sorry, you guys. I actually got a new tripod recently and I'm still working on maneuvering it apparently. So anyways, that's the fig. I'm gonna get this watered in really well. And then this is going into the garage for the night as we are supposed to hover around freezing. All right, well, fig is planted. All of the plants are either put in the garage or the garage apartment for the potential freeze tonight. And then the last thing that I wanted to share with you all is that we are considering uh, doing some beekeeping back here at uh, one hive. Um, I know people suggest that you start with two and there are many reasons for that, but I've considered it for a while and never really pulled the trigger. But now that we're kind of getting this space back here, by this space, I mean the raised bed area. Now that we're starting to get near like full completion on this back here, that is something we are considering. And I know there are so many considerations. I've been researching for quite a while and I know neighbors are a consideration. I know there's so, again, so many things um, that are considerations, but what I wanted to do is come on here and ask for advice for anybody that has actually done beekeeping in suburban slash urban areas and what was your experience with it? Uh, I'm not concerned with the time that it takes or anything like that. Um, I want to be considerate to my neighbors and you know there's bees buzzing around here all of the time. If you saw the the short that I posted recently you know there's like seven honeybees on an allium this last spring and they're they're here all the time and I do understand that they will kind of be centralized in this area but you know I, I don't plan on getting um a species of of honeybee that is on the aggressive side I will be getting the most docile option that is out there and available and again there's still tons of research to be done and I actually emailed the city today or the ag portion uh, the people that deal with that and I'm waiting on a response back because I want to be responsible and I want to go through all of the correct avenues I would want to register our hive I would want to you know just do all of the things that are the right thing to do when starting something like this in more of an urban area but I think it would be really fun and I think it would be really rewarding um, so I appreciate anybody's opinions but really I'm coming on here to ask for ask for advice for those that are either new beekeepers or experienced beekeepers but people that have had direct experience with beekeeping um, and I know there'll be a lot of opinions on this uh, just on the short community tab and the and the short that I posted there was lots of opinions most most said go for it others said don't do that that's inconsiderate to your neighbors um, some said it takes too much time and too much work and you know just all of the things so just want to reach out to experienced beekeepers because I was wanting a flow hive uh, that is a brand of hive that I've really researched and I think is very um, cool and it is very convenient for harvesting honey and again if anybody has experience with flow hives please let me know again flow is the brand f-l-o-w and I would be very curious to know your opinion because we're getting to that point where if we're going to do it this year it needs to get done I need to order um, the hive and the bees and and all of the things that are needed um, also water is a consideration many of my neighbors around here have pools it is something where we would most definitely have a consistent water source for the bees as well so they weren't going and bothering people in our neighborhood um, yeah, I mean, there'll be a case for people that are for it and there'll be a case for people that are against it, but um, I couldn't think of a better forum to come on here and ask a bunch of gardeners what their experience has been with beekeeping in urban areas because I know there are those of you out there that have done it or are doing it currently. So um, I appreciate you guys so much for watching this video. And uh, if you wouldn't mind, please like and subscribe and we'll catch you in the next video. Bye.